Hey guys, here we're going to be looking at the different reactions of primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols when they are being oxidised. Um, it is really, really important that first of all you can identify the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols because they do different things in reactions. When oxidised, primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols behave very differently. First thing we need to do is work out the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. And you do that by looking at the carbon that the hydroxide group is attached to. You need to work out whether it has either two or three hydrogens, making it primary, or one hydrogen, making it secondary, or no hydrogens, making it a tertiary alcohol. Now what they end up as depends on whether it's a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. So let's start with the easy one, tertiary alcohol. We can't oxidize that, there's going to be no reaction. Secondary alcohols are going to turn into ketones, and primary alcohols, depending on how we heat them, are going to turn into different things. So if we distill a primary alcohol, we are going to get an aldehyde. And if we reflux it, we're going to get a carboxylic acid. Now here is a setup for a distillation. You'd be expected to know what this looks like, what it's for, and how to draw it. So we have heat coming from the bottom here. Now in school, you may have used a heating mantle or you might have used a micro burner. Bunsen burners tend to be a little bit um, enthusiastic for this. And then we have our round bottom flask here which is going to have our mixture and probably some anti-bumping granules in thermometer so we can keep an eye on the temperature and the condenser so that um, everything condenses cools down nicely we're going to have liquid being heated up here it is going to evaporate turn into a gas get to this point run down here condense back into a liquid and then be distilled off over here so that we are separating out the products of the reaction. Now in a reflux, we don't separate out the products of a reaction. We want them to react over and over and over again. So after it has been heated up here, it will turn into a gas, it will go up here and it will condense in the condenser and then drop back down again to be further heated further reactions taking place. So this is the difference between reflux and distillation. Distillation removes the products, reflux lets the products react even further. So if we take these primary alcohols and we distill them to an aldehyde, we are going to end up with ethanol, butanol, And hexanal and you should know that the functional group for an aldehyde is similar to that of carboxylic acid but we only have a hydrogen down here so if you want to oxidize a primary alcohol to an aldehyde we need to add in a few things we need to add in acidified potassium dichromate You may also see it written like this. It has to be acidified. The sulfuric acid is acting as a catalyst for this reaction. You won't get the marks if you just say potassium dichromate. Now what happens is this here this is a symbol for oxidizing. So this is this is the bit that we're really interested in. It's all these oxygens that have been provided over here. And the simplest way to explain it is that it comes along and kind of steals hydrogens. So it's going to steal this hydrogen here and it's going to steal this hydrogen here. And then what we are going to end up with is our aldehyde. So 
So we've lost these two hydrogens. This now forms a double bond and we still have the one hydrogen making an aldehyde. Here we have gone from ethanol to ethanol. If we're going to reflux it, ethanol will become ethanoic acid. Butanol will become butanoic acid. Hexanol will become hexanoic acid. And again, if we want to do this, we need to have our acidified potassium dichromate in. And then instead of stealing oxygen this time, this oxygen is going to kind of squeeze its way in there a little bit. And then we are going to go to ethanoic acid. If we have a secondary alcohol, we can heat it up to get a ketone. Sometimes you might see it um, as reflux. The only reason you would reflux it instead of heating it is because you don't want your products to escape. So they're really volatile and if you just heat it, they're just going to escape straight away. So it doesn't need to be refluxed, but you reflux it so that you don't lose your products. So propentool will become and to own but because there is only one possible ketone for three carbons it's generally just written as propanone butan 2 will become but and to own and then we will have hex and three own indicating where the oxygen is now again, we can think about this oxygen as kind of stealing hydrogens. It's going to steal this hydrogen and it's going to steal this hydrogen. They're going to go away with our oxidizing agent. And of course, we still need our acidified potassium dichromate. So once it has stolen those hydrogens, what we are going to get is the oxygen needs to make two bonds, the carbon needs to make two bonds, so it makes those bonds up there. And then we have butan 2 ohm, remembering that our numbering has to be done to give the functional group the lowest number possible. And then tertiary alcohols make no reaction because there's no hydrogens for this steel. So it could take, the oxidizing agent could take this one, but then there's nothing else really for it to do. There's nothing around here it can take, nowhere for it to add in. So it doesn't do anything, there's no reaction. You need to know the colour change for acidified potassium dichromate, that it will go from orange to green. These are clips from the videos that I've done explaining how to do the method in detail. I'll pop a link to that so you can go and watch it if you need to know more about the experimental detail.